Alright, so where do I begin? When Capcom finished the first remake of Resident Evil 2002, they wanted to do a remake of the second game. But the series creator Shinji Mikami, he didn't want to work on it at the time since he was more focused on developing Resident Evil 4. And even the original director behind Resident Evil 2, Hideki Kimiya, he also wanted Capcom to remake the game for years. But as the years have followed, Shinji Mikami and Hideki Kimiya left Capcom in 2006 and they formed a new company known as Platinum Games in 2007. And ever since then, we never heard any more news and information about Resident Evil 2 Remake until 13 years later, when they announced it on their YouTube channel in 2015. And then again, we didn't hear any more information about that game going forward until E3 of 2018 during the PlayStation reveal. And ever since its release, the remake is under a new engine, the RE engine, that debuted in Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Now, having said all of that, before we go on to the story, there will be spoilers ahead for those who are new to the series. So if you don't want to get spoiled, pause the video right now, click on the timestamp so you won't get spoiled. Other than that, let the storytelling begin. Two months after the mansion incident, we're introducing the two characters, Leon S. Candy and Claire Redfield. Leon S. Kennedy is a police officer who's about to work his first day in the job, and Claire Redfield, she's a college student who is out looking for her brother, Chris Redfield. Now, when they pull over at the local gas station, they find out that it's full of zombies. But when they meet each other by the luck of faith, they escape in the police car, heading their way into Raccoon City. However, when they do get there, one thing led to another to where a car accident forces them to go their separate ways. But before moving on, they promise to meet each other in the RPD to seek shelter. When they do get there, the only problem is the whole entire place is infested with zombies. God damn. Even though Lee and Claire made it into the police station, they don't see each other much because they got their own problems to deal with on their own. And not only that, they have to go through many puzzles and obstacles to get out of the box. Surprise, motherfucker. Surprise, motherfucker. To make matters worse, Umbrella sent a timer known as Mr. Rex to hunt and kill down any survivor in Raccoon City. And thus, let the story begin. While Claire continues to look for Chris in the police station, she finds out that he had already left the country about a month ago. Throughout her investigation while trying to escape the RPD, she runs to a little girl named Sherry Birkin who was hiding from a creature. And after she saves her from the creature, she makes a promise to Sherry that she'll take her back to her mom who works for Umbrella. Now whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, we're about to find out. As Claire and Sherry were trying to escape from the parking garage, they get held up at gunpoint by Chief of Police, Brian Irons, who then kidnaps Sherry by taking her to the orphanage across town. I'll get you, you fucker! Language! Now that she discovers who Brian Irons really is and his infatuation with taxidermy, she also learns that Umbrella has been bribing this dude for years. They've been doing illegal experiments like using orphans as test subjects and also building a research lab underneath the city. When Irons realizes that Sherry has dropped her pendant, he makes a phone call to Claire who has it to basically make a trade for the pendant to save Sherry. But on Sherry's side of things, when she tried to escape on her own from Irons, the monster shows up out of nowhere and attacks Irons. However, when Claire makes it to the orphanage in time, she sees that Irons dies right before her as a creature bursts out of his chest like his aliens. Now, when she finds Sherry down in the passageway, they're being chased by the tyrant until they reach a dead end in the elevator. Luckily for them, the tyrant gets killed off by the creature. After it mutates, it rams itself into the elevator, causing everybody to crash into the sewers below. After Sherry leaves Claire behind when she is knocked out by the crash, she is later woken up by her mother named Annette Birkin. She also reveals to her that the creature that is stalking Sherry is a person named William. However, when Claire keeps on pestering about the whereabouts of her daughter, she basically tells her to mind her own business. However, unknown to Claire when she was knocked out, when Sherry was running away from the creature, it somehow infected her. And then later when she finds her mom, she locks her in a trash room for her own protection. When Claire saw how bad her condition is, Annette tells Claire to take her to the Umbrella Lab so she can treat her with the antivirus. Throughout Leon's investigation in the police station, he meets a woman named Ada Wong, an FBI agent who is on her solo mission. While she is out investigating on her own, he meets a reporter named Ben who has been locked up by the chief. The main reason why he is locked up is for investigating him and Umbrella more so. And as a result of that, the tyrant that's been sent by Umbrella kills Ben by crushing his face to tie up loose ends. Now after Leon gets his life saved by Ada Wong, he asks if he could join her on her mission, which she does. Her mission is to retrieve the G-Virus sample and take out his Umbrella's entire operation. When they make their way into the sewers below, Annette open fires at Ada, with Leon jumping away and taking a bullet for her, he passes out. After Ada takes care of him and his wound, she goes in solo looking for Annette. 
The problem is, when she finally reached her, she is caught off guard and knocked into a trash room with a piece of shrapnel appealing to her leg. Now that Leon wakes up, he finds her in that trash room as well as taking care of her wound. Now, during the whole ride in the cable cart, Ada asks Leon to carry out her mission for her to get the G sample. Why so? It's because of how bad her injury is. She even gives Leon a kiss, expressing her feelings towards him. Now, when they reach their destination to the Nest Lab, he carries out a mission for her. As Leon gets the G sample and Claire gets the antivirus, they're being confronted by the creature, with Annette assisting them to take it down. And after they ask who the creature is, Annette explains to them that it's her husband and that they were the ones who created the G virus. So, about a few days ago, a brother sent their soldiers to retrieve William's work from being sold into the US military. And while refusing to hand over his life's work, he pulls out a gun and is shot down in self defense. And then they took the G samples. Wanting to get revenge, he injected himself with the G virus and he kills the rest of the soldiers in the sewers. All the vials that contained the G virus during the scuffle were destroyed and consumed by the rats who brought it into Raccoon City. And after telling her side of the story, the creature grabs a net and throws her against the wall. Claire gives Annette the antivirus to treat Sherry, and then they took the creature down. When Claire reunites with Annette and Sherry, Sherry is cured. However, the same cannot be said for Annette because of how severe her injuries are and she passes out. With Sherry saying her final goodbye to her mother, Claire and Sherry leaves as the self-destruct sequence is going off. Now on Leon's side of the things, when he checks up on Annette, she tells him to destroy the G-sample before he gets into the wrong hands. If Leon tells her that it's going to the FBI as evidence, she tells him that Ada is not an FBI agent. She's actually a mercenary trying to sell the virus to the highest bidder. Now when Leon confronts Ada at the bridge, she doesn't have to fact on who she really is and pulls out her gun in disappointment. Now with Leon refusing to hand over the sample and Ada not willing to kill Leon, Annette shoots Ada to prevent her from getting the sample. Now when the bridge is falling apart with Leon catching her, he lets go of the sample as it falls down below. With Leon losing his grip, Ada tells him to take care of himself before she too falls into the bottomless pit below. However, there is no time for grief since Leanne, Claire, and Sherry need to get the hell up out of Dodge. And when they find out about each other's whereabouts, they plan to escape in the evac train. However, while doing so, Claire has to face the William creature and Leanne has to face off against Mr. X with the help of Ada. Now, after taking care of their problems, Leanne, Claire, and Sherry are reunited in the evac train, but their moment was short lived. Why? Because the creature is back. Having enough of this nightmare, they detach one of the cars the creature was in as it is covered in flames and killed in the explosion. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. After they made it peacefully outside, Leon and Claire made a vow that if another outbreak has happened, they'll be there to stop it. And with that, the three of them walk into the distance with Sherry asking Leon and Claire if they can adopt her. The end. Roll credits. Alright, so here's my thoughts about the story. The overall tone of the story is better than the original in my opinion. As far as scenario goes, including my disappointment with them, I'll speak more about that in the gameplay section. Now when it comes to the characters, I thought everyone's performance is good at best. However, I do want to nitpick about Leon and Claire, because they feel like carbon copies of each other, especially how they react to similar situations. Let's get through this. Both of us. We're gonna make it. Both of us. Now Leon in this game, he's everything I expected him to be as a rookie cop. As for Claire, the only problem I have with her is she comes off a bit too confident during impossible odds. You mean to tell me, after a third time you fought this creature when it mutates, you're gonna tell Annette? I got this. Who the fuck is this asshole? Anybody with the right frame of mind would have said, Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Now, the other thing I didn't like about the story was how very little Leon and Claire interact with each other. Because the only time they see each other is one time in the police station, and that's a big no no. Because in the original game, they communicate a lot with each other through walkie talkies. They talk about what happened, what they saw, and where they meet each other. Because them leaving each other in notes in the remake and acting like they don't exist for each other until the final conclusion really contradicts itself. Record! And as for the side characters, Sherry is better, Annette's better, and Ada still looks fine as hell. I just hate how they change the story from a spy to a mercenary. Because in the old game, I love how they pay homage to the original with the whole username and password Easter egg. This game, however, doesn't have that. Record! As for Brian Irons, he wasn't as sick and twisted as I thought he'd be from the original. As for the rest of the characters, not much to say about them other than longer screen time, which is good. My overall thoughts of the story, I'll give it a B. Going back into Raccoon City is very refreshing. The fact that it's raining during the start of the plot really adds on to that atmosphere. 
and then you get into the police station and it's full of all types of unsettling feelings. It's just crazy the place originally was a museum. But if it's one thing, I gotta get props to Capcom for the RE engine for reimagining what we already knew about the original. And since we're on the topic of reimagining, the core gameplay is refreshing. For instance, this time you can carry a lot more inventory than ever. And although it sounds awesome, there's still a lot more challenges you have to face like boarding up windows for example. Now if it's one thing, one interesting thing that is back that wasn't in the old game is the use of gunpowder. And although there isn't a reloading tool or chemicals to use, I'm not complaining. Cause just like how you can mix certain herbs to make stronger herbs, for gunpowder you can do the same thing for ammo and it's very simple. What is also back from the Resident Evil 1 remake are the variety in defensive weapons. The only difference this time around are that knives have durability. But on the flip side, if you defend yourself against the enemy and you take it down, you can pick it back up to save ammo for later encounters, which is a good thing. Now I never thought I would say this, but blue herbs in this game are freaking dope. Not only are they used to cure poison, but mixing them with a red herb, it helps trigger your character's durability. And lastly, it wouldn't be a Resident Evil game without mentioning the puzzles. In my 98 review of Resident Evil 2, I said that the puzzles wasn't challenging enough. This game however does the opposite because it provides a challenge. The good benefit about the challenge is that it's not too easy and it's definitely not as frustrating like the puzzles are for Resident Evil 3. And if anyone saw my review of Resident Evil 3, I hate the water sample puzzle. Oh, fuck it, but as far as my whole overall thoughts of the core gameplay, for it I give it an A+. For the first time ever since the original game, zombies are scary again. <laughs> And one shot to the head doesn't always take them out as you hope. Even though these zombies can be intimidating at first, they ain't that hard to kill. You can even push right past them by shooting off their limbs, which makes the gameplay flow a lot more easier. It's even more helpful if you want to save precious ammo for later. Now another thing about these zombies, not only can they bust through doors, bust through windows and jump over high places, one thing's for sure, when they're dead, you ain't gonna see a blood around them like you do in the original. Instead, you have to wait for the sound effect, and I'll let you hear it for yourself. Not only are zombies are a big threat, so are liquors, and they are a lot more dangerous than ever. Not only can they do some serious damage, they are scary to walk past by, even if they're blind. Sometimes being too close to them will start a fight, even if you ain't ready. But if you have enough ammo and feeling confident, I say go for it. But as far as the other enemy types, the only two you need to worry about are the zombies and liquors. Now if you want to know what anxiety feels like, Surprise, motherfucker. Mr. X is that example. Take what you already knew about the original, including the persistent nature of Nemesis, and this is what you get. Cause just when you think you were doing good, the game decides to throw a curveball at you. Instead of a few fights with the guy in the original, this game he follows you everywhere you go in the police station. You can choose to fight him, but it's better to run away from him and save your precious ammo. The scariest part about Mr. X, even if you run away from him, he's somewhere nearby. But I'll say this, after encountering him a few more times, he's more annoying to deal with than he is scary. Even more so when it comes to solving puzzles. But if you ask me who's more intimidating out of Mr. X and Nemesis, until the remake of Resident Evil 3 comes out, Mr. X takes the cake. Now, one of the problems I have with this game is how Leon and Claire's campaigns are similar to each other minus the subplots. What made the original game so special was its four scenarios and its zapping system. For example, whatever character you start off with in the A scenario, you see a different outcome in the B scenario, including key items. This game, however, is said that the A and B scenario is not a first and second run. Now, you would have thought that playing a second run would offer a brand new experience, right? Wrong! There's not much of a difference besides enemy placement and puzzle solutions. Cause the only thing you're really playing for is the true ending. That's some old bullshit. Like I said earlier, what was cool about the original game was the four scenarios. Even though the core story was the same, two out of four scenarios had very different outcomes. For example, if you beat the game with Claire A, Sherry got affected and then she was cured. However, in the B scenario, Sherry was never affected at all. You get my point? Cause what I'm really frustrated with is the fact that we will never see Ada shoot Mr. X in the face in the remake. Now if I were to guess, I would assume that the developers thought that Ada blowing him up with a car would be more satisfactory than the original. 
it really wouldn't be a big deal for me if the second run was handled in a different way. Like I wouldn't mind if they were to tell the same story, it's just that when you add a second run and the gameplay experience is the same as the first, it makes the second run pointless. But besides me from just nitpicking, one thing I do appreciate about the second run is how I paid homage to Leon and Claire's alternate weapons from the original game. Cause when I saw stuff like this, it made me pretty happy. Now it would have been nice to see the Brads that become back in this game besides the flyer. But I guess you can't get everything your way. So after you beat the game, you unlock the Force of Armor mode to where you play as Hunk. Just like the original, your whole objective is to survive and walk out the police station with the G sample. The thing is, all you really have are the limited amount of supplies, and that's it. So basically, it's a hard challenge run to see if you got what it takes to make it. And although this mode may be hard at first, it's not as hard as the original, since the new gameplay mechanics can help you bypass certain things, like using defensive weapons and split second iframes. For me, it took me three times to beat this mode with sheer luck. But after you beat the mode, you unlock the Tofu Survivor, which is the same thing as the Force Survivor, the only thing this time is you play it as a living Tofu, with knives this time. Now, I didn't beat this mode with Tofu, but I will point out from what I watched from other gamers, is that when you beat the mode with Tofu, you unlock more Tofu characters with their own arsenal of weapons, which is a cool thing. And lastly, there is a Ghost Survivors DLC to where you play as three different characters in a what if scenario, Kendo, Catherine, and Ghost. Now in my opinion, the DLC is something to do after you beat the game in the Force Survivor. That's not to say it's not fun, because it can be. Now when it comes to the characters, each of them have their own special enemy to take out, like poison zombies, zombies with armor, and zombies that can regenerate. And after you beat all three what if scenarios, that's when you unlock Sheriff Daniels to play as him, to where you fight 100 zombies just to survive. And like I said earlier, it's nothing seriously to be hype about, it's just something to do after you finish the other content. Now the only thing that would be nice from Capcom is if they give us the extreme battle mode so I can play as Chris. Whether that will happen or not is up to Capcom. So after you beat the game, you unlock the original costumes from the old games for you nostalgia fans out there. And while Leon's costume looks very faithful to the original, Claire's outfit, not so much. And I'm not sure why Capcom would do her like that. You blew it. She looks out of place without her black undershirt. You blew it. What's the point of her having a sleeveless vest when she could wear a tank top? You blew it. But thank God for the modern community that can fix small issues like that. You blew it. That's really sad when modders can make a more faithful outfit than the developers. You blew it. Don't even get me started with Ada, yo. They didn't even bother giving her her original costume. It's the same as the regular gameplay. You blew it. Oh, they can do it for Sherry, but they can't even do it for Ada, which is messed up. You blew it. I know I'm just nitpicking, but I'm just saying, man. You blew it. Having said all of that, there are other costumes you can choose from, but the problem is you can't get it unless you buy the deluxe edition or pay for everything else separately. But if you're interested, I will say this, the costumes in this game are pretty interesting. You have noir costumes with the black and white filter, you have a Rick Grimes inspired outfit from The Walking Dead it seems, a military look, and an Elza Walker costume. For those of you who don't know, Elsa Walker originally was supposed to be the character at Resident Evil 2 until they cancelled the game and replaced her with Clara Redfield. But as far as the other aesthetics, they do have Samurai Edge guns from Chris, Jill, and Wesker from the OG games. And while it's cool to have, it doesn't really do a whole lot. But probably the best thing about the Deluxe Edition is that it comes with the original soundtrack as well as sound effects that you can swap out. Now if you're a fan of the original game, definitely give the soundtrack a shot after you beat the game. You'll definitely feel right at home like I did. After everything I said about this game during its review, the remake so far is pretty faithful to the original despite minor changes. But what do I think about it? Well let's recap. Now when it comes to the main story and its core retelling, for me I think it's an improvement over the original in terms of acting, direction, tone, and character motives. The only problem I have with this game, I wish there was an actual B scenario that complements the A scenario, and that's about it. Now when it comes to the gameplay, it's the best in the series since Resident Evil 4 in my honest opinion. I felt that the enemies were intimidating, the puzzles were challenging, and the overall gameplay is fun with lots of replay value. Now when it comes to the full package, for the pros, we have a grounded story, refreshing gameplay, best looking graphics, free content, the game is scarier than ever, and a good reimagining. For the pros, we have a useless second run, and the same boss fights. But as far as that, there is something else negative for me to say, the rest of what I just said were just nitpicks. For my official rating, I'm going to give this game 9 out of 10.